Tonight, on a special edition of Evening, Team Evening reveals all of your best Northwest Escapes winners. I'm Kim Incarnation at your pick for Best Family Farm. What's a great spot to take a day trip by yourself? I'm St. Brian in the place you voted best solo getaway. And take a road trip on the best scenic byway. Hey, I'm Jim Dever, and welcome to our best Northwest Escape special. All the greatest getaways as voted on by you. I am currently shouting over the roar of Deception Falls along Stevens Pass. This half mile hike was voted best kids hike. Hey, I forgot to bring a kid. Your favorite solo destination is being explored by our favorite solo traveler. Hey, St. Brian. Hey, the best thing about traveling solo is you're more open to chance encounters. So by chance, I'm letting everyone tell me what to check out in Port Townsend. It just makes sense. If you want to get to know a place, start where the locals start their day. This is better living through coffee and it's just a really nice, welcoming, calming place to be. Here you can grab a seat and imagine what it's like to live a storybook life among the locals. We have people that come and play games, people that come and work. We have people that just come here to hang out and see our bright, smiling faces in the back. All right, so where do you think I should go next? Fort Warden has a lot to offer. You get to go and look at the lighthouse. I love taking my kids out there and playing in the bunkers. Built around the turn of the last century to protect the harbor, Fort Warden's abandoned bunkers now seem like the perfect place to shoot a horror film full of jump scares. Wow, I hope I'm the only person in here. Fort Warden Historical State Park has more than 400 acres. Jim Bustle comes out here on hikes with his college friend, Steve Westcott. I'm hungry, where should I go? Hey, how about Waterfront Pizza? Downtown Port Townsend. What's special about it? any kind of pizza you can imagine, and it's really great. Okay, I was told this was the best pizza in town. I, that's what we've been told too. <laughs> Joe Wheatonhands is a local here on a lunch break. It's his turn now to tell me where to go. There's a really cool shop in town. It's called Phoenix Rising. They sell like a lot of things made out of gemstones. For nearly 40 years, Jill Spear has owned one of the largest metaphysical shops in the country. Jill, you get to send me to my last location in Port Townsend. Maybe end on a sweet note. Ice cream. Elevated ice cream across the street. <laughs> it's been here forever, and their ice cream is homemade, and it's wonderful. It's all natural ice cream made to elevate your spirits. Like I've always said, every great story ends with ice cream. Every great story and every great adventure. Thanks, Saint. Now moving on to another winner. Here's Kim with Best Family Farm. Yeah, this place has been around since 1965, but there are a ton of new things to experience right now, too. Generations of families have made Remlinger Farms a destination, thanks to the family who's run it for generations, dating back to Nathan Scherfe's great-grandfather. I think I was about eight years old when I first started working here. He loved it, but made other life plans. I actually got my uh, master's in finance, and thought I was going over to New York, Wall Street, and then I got pulled over to the farm. No regrets. No regrets. It means so much to me that I get to be a part of something that's so special in so many people's lives. Traditions like the petting zoo and berry picking will always be here, but Remlinger also keeps adding to the fun. In the park, you'll find new rides, including one with a flight of stairs. 
It's a 40 foot tower zip line and it goes 300 feet across a lake and through the trees. So pretty fun. <laughs> They've also replaced the famous kids' train with a shiny new model. For teens, there's a brand new arcade with more than 20 games. Hey! The other new addition is inside the cafe area. It's not just kids that will get to come and have fun. Now it's also adults get to have fun. Remlinger Brewing, featuring cider and beer made on site by an award-winning brewmaster. Delicious. First year, entered into the Washington State competition, and he won two medals. There's also live music from local musicians every weekend. Remlinger Farms has come a long way from its humble beginnings as a produce stand. And this family is thrilled to see other families coming back year after year. The best compliment I think we've heard is, I love how new the farm feels. And so it's something that we wanted to carry on of still having the farm, but making it new and exciting for everyone to enjoy again. Thank you, Kim. Beer and turkeys. Now that's my kind of farm. For more information about Remlinger Farms and any of the other winners you see on tonight's show, just go to king5evening.com. Up next, roadside attraction winners. And later on, a trip to the coast for best cabins and best dog destination. Evening's Best Northwest Escapes is sponsored by Visit Lake Chelan. Snoqualmie Falls takes the number one spot for best roadside attraction. Find it along Highway 202. 1.5 million visitors a year make this beauty Washington's most loved waterfall. Second place roadside attraction is the Fremont Troll. He lives underneath the north side of the Aurora Bridge in Seattle and is actually the uncle of the Seattle Kraken's mascot, Bowie. Your third place roadside attraction is the massive mountain we all adore that's visible from dozens of highways and byways in the Northwest, Mount Rainier. Thanks, Kim, and welcome back to our Best Northwest Escape Special. I am currently escaping on the beautiful Deception Falls Trail. Now, the Fremont Troll was a double winner this year. It also won for Best Weird Wonder. And speaking of weird wonders, here's Jose. Underneath the Aroda Bridge, there's a creature that took over the neighborhood. There's almost nothing that says Seattle better than the Fremont Troll. It's funky, it's surprising, it's a little anti-establishment. It's actually the perfect emblem of the city the way it used to be, which is a little bit different, a little bit non-corporate. It's this like really funky, cool public art piece, weird and fun. The Troll was born in 1990 a creation of four artists. Steve Badanes was one of them. Now a professor of UW. Just after the Fremont Troll, we started here. I got this job at the University of Washington and I felt like students could build community projects. The story of the Troll competition was that the Fremont Arts Council decided to do something under the Aurora Bridge. They had an open competition and I entered with a couple of my students. We went ahead and built the model and then the community actually voted on which one to build at the Fremont Fair. Same model that now is in the care of the crew of Mohai. Well, the model looks a lot like the Troll, but it's a lot smaller. It's made out of paper mache and it's, you know, got all kinds of cool stuff in it. It's now part of Seattle history. The Troll design was a success. We actually won. We won by a six to one vote and then we had to figure out how to build it. We built it in three months. Was it fun? It was really a lot of fun. You know, we really didn't know what a troll looked like. We knew that they lived under bridges. We figured, you know, wherever we didn't know anatomy, we just slugged on a little bit more hair. One of the things that I took away from a conversation with him was how part of the shape of the troll was based on the shape of his nose. It's taken from this one here. We <laughs> love the but the nose of the troll is not the only fun fact. Have you noticed the car? Do you know that the car that is in his hands is actually a Volkswagen Beetle? And also, back in the old days, they used to have a Californian license plate. Don't know why. Well, the inside of the Volkswagen is a time capsule. There was a rumor that Kurt Cobain's ashes were in the, in the glove compartment. If you're wondering how tall is the Fremont Troll, it's 18 feet. Even the quirkiest idea can bring delight, enjoyment to a whole bunch of people. It's an image of the city. Fremont Troll is the most thing that I've built that made the most people happy. 
Thanks, Jose. Now let's climb aboard our Kenmore Air float plane, Maggie, for a trip to the place you named Best Island. As one of the jewels of the Salish Sea, Orcas Island has always been a sought out destination. If you go, be sure not to miss the highest point on the island, Mount Constitution. At almost half a mile above sea level, it's the highest point in the San Juan Islands. When it's open, the observation tower built during the Great Depression is worth the walk up, offering sweeping views of the water and surrounding islands. If hiking around has built up your appetite, there's a great place down the road where you'll find food that doesn't get any fresher. You are in Olga, Washington, which is on beautiful Orcas Island, and the name of our farm is Buck Bay Shellfish Farm. Buck Bay has been producing oysters and clams off and on since the 1930s. Oysters. One of the funnest things that people really like to do, and where we kind of all started, was you could get go into our live room where we have live oysters and live clams and live crab. They took an old boat barn and made it part of a bistro they opened in 2019. We put the commercial kitchen on the back side of it with the hope of being able to make the best fish and chips in the whole entire world. When you come into the bistro, you can get oysters a few different ways. You can get them raw on the half shell, or you can get them fried, deep fried. People who come to Buck Bay Shellfish Farm leave here with more than just full bellies. It just seems to be people's happy place. Besides great food, Orcas is also home to many talented artists, like the ones you'll find at Orcas Island Pottery. We have a lot of people that come here every year, and a lot of people say it's their favorite place on earth. It was started in 1945 by a couple named Joe and Mark Clay Sherman. From start to finish, it's usually at least a couple of weeks because the piece has to be thrown and then trimmed and dried, fired, glazed, fired again. Kim and her brothers are now a part of the four generations of potters here keeping the ancient art alive. It's one of the oldest traditions in human civilization is making pottery, and I think that things just feel different in your hands when you know that it was made by a person. With so much beauty, both man-made and natural on Orcas Island, leaving here with memories that will last a lifetime is almost guaranteed. Okay, let's raise a toast to all of our Escapes winners at your choice for Best Destination Brewery. You'll find it in Whatcom County. Here's Kim. Bellingham's Boundary Bay Brewery has been a destination for decades. We opened in 1995, so it was a much different beer culture then. And we were one of the few Northwest breweries to kind of jump in and start making an IPA. For owners Janet Leitner and Ed Bennett, staff is family here. And vice versa, Madison Pugmire is Janet's daughter. She grew up in this brewery. I used to be able to sit in the tap room and drink my hot cocoa and watch my cartoons in the morning. Today, she manages the restaurant with help from her son, Lucian, who's also growing up here. It's fitting for a place with these nicknames. Bellingham's living room, Bellingham's backyard. Sure, you'll find award-winning beer at Boundary, but you'll also find a place that welcomes everyone, is pet-friendly, and has a gallery space inside its tap room with rotating displays of art, most of it available for purchase. The food is locally sourced, some from nearby waters. My favorite things are the pesto salmon sandwich and the harvest salad and our steamer broth that we make for the clams. But the most important thing you'll find here is community. Boundary Bay has upcoming events supporting sixth grade band kids, Sea to Ski, an iconic Bellingham relay race, and organizations working to end hunger. Just a tiny example of the good done in Bellingham's living room for decades. I love being a part of something that's bigger than just me. Okay, you'll find Boundary Bay Brewery on Railroad Ave in Bellingham. They're open for lunch and dinner. Up next, Jim hits the road along the best scenic byway and the rest of your best Northwest Escapes winners reveal. Welcome back to our best Northwest Escapes special. I am hiking the Deception Falls Trail, a very rigorous half mile hike. It is only for the most fit among us. But if you'd like something a little more laid back, how about get behind the wheel of a car? There are so many great road trips in our state. 
but the one that you voted number one is where the mountains meet the sea. What makes your choice for best scenic drive so special? Well, let me spell it out for you. C is for chuckinut. It's a native term meaning long beach far away from a narrow entrance. And the 20 mile long Chuckanut Drive has been a sightseer's paradise for more than 100 years. H is for historic. You have to try it. The tiny towns of Bow and Edison are now the trendy gourmet epicenter of Skagit County. U, unbelievable blooms. You'll find them here at Larrabee State Park, along with spectacular beaches, mind-blowing rock formations, and a historic outdoor stage for anyone who's feeling theatrical. C is for the crazy collectibles and other priceless treasures you can find at Bonner's Trading Post in Bow. K stands for killer views. From scenic viewpoints and public beaches to the nearby vista of Oyster Dome, Chuckanut Drive is a target-rich environment for your Instagram. A is for the artwork of Borassic Park in Bow. Joe Treat creates all of his fantastic creatures out of driftwood gathered from local beaches. I think my wife will tell me when I'm done. She don't want too much more in the yard and it's, it's hard to mow around here. N is for nudists. They're letting it all hang out at Dogfish Point and a few other more secretive locations. U is for underwater life. Check out the tide pools teeming with activity at Wildcat Cove. T is for timeless. That's what the vintage village of Fairhaven is, and if you're heading north, you'll find it as the prize at the end of your drive. For an eye-pleasing journey close to home and a world away, Chuckanut is the word. Okay, now let's head to the coast and the place that won for best cabins and best dog destination. Every dog has its day. And is there anything better than a day at the beach? The biggest draw is the beach. It's not a requirement to bring a dog here, but it's, it's close. I have my dog here and she wants to go to the beach right now. Dustin True and his family run Iron Springs Resort in Copalis Beach. They've been coming here for generations. So I came here when I was six months old. Uh, my father came here when he was, I think, two years old. Um, my favorite part is the family experience. Just to oh, look at you, see it's so cool, right? And that family experience includes the four-legged members. We love the dogs. They get to come in, uh, get a treat, get a tennis ball. It's just a happy place to be. The resort has 25 dog-friendly cabins, complete with blankets, towels, and a place to cool down with a drink. For the humans, every cabin features a fully stocked kitchen, comfy furnishings, a wood-burning fireplace, and a deck overlooking the Pacific Ocean. It's great because you don't have to pack a lot. Bring some clothes, bring a little bit of food. Everything else is here that you could possibly need. The property also features more than two miles of nature trails to explore. Even when we're full, you don't realize that we are. It's, it's the family experience. It's the cabins, it's the fireplaces. It's a place to gather. It's a place for families to be families. And it's a place to make memories and leave behind a few paw prints. Stick around to meet the winner of our grand prize giveaway. But first, here's Kim with the winners of Best Resort. Campbell's Resort on Lake Chelan is your pick for Best Resort. Its lakefront location and family-friendly amenities make this place a perennial favorite. Second place for Best Resort goes to Sleeping Lady Mountain Resort in Leavenworth. A peaceful place with a bonus. When you book a stay here, the profits go to supporting the arts and environment in the Central Cascades. Third place is Alderbrook Resort and Spa, a cozy and classic getaway on the Hood Canal that's been around since 1913. Welcome back to our Best Northwest Escape Special. Now it is time to meet the voter who was randomly selected as our grand prize winner. He's from Bremerton and he has a very trendy first name. 
Hi, is this Jim? This is Jim, is this Jim? This is Jim, it's the Jim and Jim Show. So, uh, hey man, how you doing? You, sir, are the winner. No. You are the winner. <laughs> you really? Absolutely, congratulations, Jim. You won a $5,000 trip to Lake Chelan. Congratulations, Jim Brooks, and congratulations to all of our Best Northwest Escapes winners. Thanks for joining us from beautiful Deception Falls.